director of The Other Americans, Ruben Santiago Hudson. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. If you all don't know who this man is, you've been living in a hole. I don't know. You've seen him everywhere. <laughs> you've seen him everywhere in front of the camera, in the front of the stage. He's done so much work behind the scenes as a screenwriter and uh, as a playwright. And he is working with another multi-talented human being, uh, John Leguizamo. The uh, production now at DC's Arena Stage, The Other Americans, was written by John Leguizamo. And Ruben is here because he's the director. What a wonderful production. I just wanted to say that right off the bat. And well, people you. need to go to Arena Stage to see this. It's uh, in the genre of what we might call um, a family drama that has a lot of complications. Why don't you tell us a little more from that? Well, I don't want to give up too much, but I do want to say that it's it's just exciting to have a Latin family take center stage instead of always being on the periphery. Uh, uh, this Latin community, this Latin family is in the center of the world in this, you know, two hour epic drama. Um, and it's just, um, you know, uh, insular family and all the difficulties that, that are that happen in any family, any American family That's take right. place in this household and to to just sit with this Latin family and hear the sounds and smell the smells and see the foods and the recipes, the dances and the conflict, the pathos, the pain and the joy of just being a family and navigating, you know, relationships and space. You're absolutely right, because that's what I summed up to myself is that this could happen across the board in any family household and where you're trying to, um, as it says in the notes, you're trying to make the American dream come true. For you but things happen and then there are layers of things that happen that um maybe you're not a uh, you and john leguizamo coming together with this and then bringing this world premiere the world premiere to arena stage talk about that whole coming together in the process well you know i got a few texts from john and i was very busy and i think i was writing i don't know if i was writing my rainy or something at the time and so I didn't get back to him uh, in a timely fashion. He kept saying, don't leave me hanging. I got something I want you to read. And once I read it, it was exactly where I needed to be. I needed to be with my Latin culture, with that Latin aspect and part of my culture that I, I think I need to serve a little stronger. And so I was just coming from directing a Latin uh, a play. And then his fabulous play comes up, this great talent, this wonderful, wonderful artist, John Leguizamo. So uh, we started working on it a few years ago. And then once we felt it was ready to go, we had to figure out where would we like to be. And when you think of, uh, of places in this country that are theater places that where historically some of the greatest plays have been had world premieres or, 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 or being part of the journeys, being in D.C. And, you know, we have several theaters here. And, and uh, uh, I was very excited about the idea of working with Hannah Sharif, the new artistic director at the arena. And so I gave her a call and said, I got something if you'd like to see it. And she said, how fast can you get it to me? And it was in her uh, email immediately. She read it, called me the next day and said, let's do this. So I spoke to John and said, this is where I like to go. And he was over the moon because of the history here at the arena and also the proximity to New York and the educated theater audience and also having yes. the opportunity to bring in a multicultural audience, which is here in D.C., one of the most multicultural cities in the country. I think a lot of people, uh, may, and I'm glad you mentioned it, may not realize how many pre-Broadway runs started at Arena Stage before, in fact, you've got the poster in the background of The Great White Hope with James Earl Jones, who we just recently lost. That started here at Arena Stage and then went on mm -hmm. to Broadway. And um, I wanna get into the uh, crux of the play, but you and I did have a conversation after uh, the performance and there are hopes to take it at least to um, the public theater in New York at in due time, but the cast is amazing. Um, you have someone else in there that Les, who a lot of people may recognize that name, and I know they would know her face because she's been in a lot of different things as well. Um, she was in Oz. She was in um, uh, New York Dexter. 
Yeah, New York Undercover, Dexter. I mean, all of these major dramas. And she plays the wife, Patty, of uh, uh, John Leguizamo's character, Nelson. Then uh, we have the two actors that are portraying their children. Um, and that would be Bradley James Te Te Tejada. No, no, Bradley is the son-in-law. It would be- Oh, I'm sorry, Rebecca he's the son-in-law. I'm Rebecca sorry, they're Jimenez. already married. That's right, and Rebecca Jimenez. And then your son is playing um, Nikki, the uh, son of uh, the John Leguizamo and uh, Luna character. But let's talk about his situation. And it's based on, the play itself is based on what uh, John told me, a true situation. There yes. was a hate crime. There was a hate crime that took place. Yes, it was, it was you know, a family member of his uh, was assaulted, traumatically uh, assaulted because it, it set that person into um, somewhat of a nervous breakdown eventually. And it was just trying to, trying to find their footing, his footing and find balance in his life again. And subsequently he had to be, um, uh, put into a, a institution, a mental institution for a short amount of time, or actually 10 months or so. And and this play takes place with that person, um, my son Trey being depicted as that person who comes home and he's trying to find his balance, find his place in that house, find his place in society again, and find out how he can function with the trauma that he carries with him every day into this world that offers his own traumas. So the play is that balance. The mother the nurturing mother wants to take care of him, but also show him love and a certain amount of independence. The father, who's pretty much domineering, like a strong Latin father, you know, but the machismo is there, the alpha, alpha dog, as they say, is there. And then that 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 in sort of family, the people that make the, the, the gumbo good, that make the ingredients of the play good, the best friend, the son-in-law, the, the you know, these things come in. And um, and then we which are combustionable with his dilemma. Nikki's dilemma coming in trying to just be normal and what he wants more than anything is his freedom freedom to be freedom to be and then there's another issue going on and that has to do with the family business um Nelson owns a series of uh, a number of laundromats yes um yeah. some financial challenges and he has to figure out how to manage and work his way through those items those activities as well and um, so you've got things that are piling on top of each other mm -hmm. that um, build up to a, a state of, oh my God, what's happening here? Mm -hmm. And I was observing you when I came to the performance, I saw you uh, sitting in the audience and I saw you really <laughs> looking at the stage and contemplating and I was just wondering, what is he thinking? And I appreciate this picture right here because I wanna give credit also to the set designer but I kept looking at you and looking at how you were looking at your actors. And I kept wondering, I'm wondering what he's thinking. I could see you smiling sometimes, but you were just very pensive in terms of looking at your actors. And I'm thinking that's the way you're supposed to be. But look at this set. We're showing a picture now of the set. Your set designer was amazing. I really felt like I was looking at a real house in Queens and you did some things with the set that I'm not gonna talk about. Because Thank you. Because <laughs> people have to go see it. There's some things there, but even if I could figure out, you know, you, you can see the bedroom, you can see the living room, the dining room, the entryway, you can figure out there's some steps that maybe, you know, just a, 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 a in town home that's probably more narrow than you think it would be, but it's kind of mm -hmm. narrow. But then when you get inside, when you feel the warmth of, of the home, it seems to be bigger. But the set design was, to me, realistic, so realistic yes. and beautifully done. So please, uh, well, kudos to the set designer. Well, it's a it's a realistic play, and so with some hyper real moments. And so what 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 the objective was here with Arnolfo Maldonado, who uh, did the set design. Well, the, the, the objective was to make a house, put a house in the Fishlander Theater and uh, let's live in it. Let's make it lived in. So throughout the process, little elements made it more and more lived in. I have to say, uh, I'm extremely proud. That was a half of the set. That was for the, for the audience's listen. That was half of it. But I'm just extremely proud of the entire um, uh, team that I put together, the, the actors as well as the designers and, and all the people backstage who have been instrumental in making this thing pop. The, the staff that they have here at the arena who 
I really put to their task and they and they grabbed onto it with both arms and just, you know, because I'm very meticulous and very timely about how I do things. I don't ponder things. I move things along in a very smooth drop off, drop off way. Things drop into other things. So I never let the audience really sit back too much. And that was me when you were watching me. Um, I have to admit to you, and very honestly, when I go to the theater, I simply go to the theater. I learned from my mentor, uh, uh, Lloyd Richards, uh, when you do the work in the room, you have to just sit back and allow it to reveal itself in, in, in performance. And that's what I do. Uh, of course, I have different things and notes that I would take when my director had pops on. But for the most part, I am enjoying the play and I'm taking the journey with you all, the audience, uh, the pain in it, the, the real laughter in it, which is a lot of laughter um, and the love in it. I'm taking yeah. it in. And I, I cry real tears and I laugh real laughs. You know. Well, the play is wonderful. Again, this is at Arena Stage until November the 24th. The Other Americans. Ruben Santiago Santiago Hudson is the director. It's a screen. It's a uh, the playwright is John Leguizamo. He's also one of the leads in the play. It's fantastic, and I uh, want to give again kudos to Hannah Sharif. This yes. is her inaugural season at Arena Stage. Yes, she's been here in the D.C. area for a little more than a year, but this uh, ensemble of plays. It's 10 plays she's putting on this year, and I believe seven of the 10 are new. And one of those new plays is The, the Other, other Americans. Americans. Yes, and we want you to go see it. November 24th is when it leaves, is the last performance. So please see it now. You will not be sorry. And thank you. Thank you so much, Ruben, for being with us today. Well, I appreciate you having me in uh, in a, uh... I enjoyed the first segment. I'm saying I got to I got I got to tune into this now. You're doing great work, and I appreciate it. And thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, we are a black female-owned newspaper that this show is produced out of. We have just launched our 60th anniversary year, so you have said the most wonderful things to us. So thank you so very much. We're going to get you to say something else about that once you get off camera. So thank you. Alrighty. No problem. Thanks. Have a good one. Congratulations on the production. Oh, appreciate it.